Here's today's question. Do you have a small bathroom where you can touch the knee wall, the sink, and the toilet from one spot? <laughs> if you do, pedestal sinks for small bathroom remodels are great. They make the space look bigger and you can choose the aesthetic that you need for your home. So we're gonna be installing the pedestal sink, the stand, and the faucet all by American Standard, which by the way, we wanted to thank for sending these to us and help you out with your own project. And in the end, you'll have a rock solid pedestal sink and a leak proof plumbing connection with the faucet. All right, let's go ahead and open up these boxes here. So this is the stand right here. This is gonna be pretty nice, it's all chrome. This is actually the towel bar portion of the console table, which is nice. So you don't need a separate towel bar on the wall, you can just put it on the console table. This is a front leg assembly, and what this does is go here and here. And they go down through the front of the towel bar. This is a rear leg assembly. It's going to go right here, and you have two of those. The next step is to adjust this nut here, such that only 5 eighths inch of the thread is exposed. This is the shelf support and there are pins on it. So one, two, three, four pins on it. These pins need to be closest to you when you put this over the threaded rods. The reason why you want these pins to be positioned the way that they are closest to you is because there's gonna be a glass shelf that goes on the support right here. Place a bottom leg tube over each threaded rod. So you have one, two, three, four. Now place a nut on each threaded rod. You want to tighten these nuts firmly with a crescent wrench. Each one of these threaded rods is going to receive a chrome foot. Check this out. These have heft to them. Pure, solid metal. Thread the foot on so that the rod is about one quarter of an inch from the leading edge of the foot. That looks to be about one quarter inch from the edge. All right, now we're gonna flip this over. And then the last step is to put a leveling trumpet onto each of the rear legs. Now what I'm gonna do is position it flush with the wall. Time to grab the pedestal sink. These rubber grommets should fit up into the recesses of the pedestal sink. This next step is optional, but what I'm gonna do is take a level. I'm gonna line it up with the center of my light. I'm gonna make a mark right here because this is gonna be hidden by the mirror. I'm gonna move my level down. Then I'm gonna make another mark on the wall, just a light one. And that's gonna be my center line. I want this center line to line up with the center hole in the pedestal sink. So now this is where I want my sink to be positioned and it's time to anchor it to the wall. So a few tips on that. The best way to attach a pedestal sink to a wall is to have wood blocking in the wall and secure it using lag bolts or lag screws with washers. Now I'm gonna remove the sink, I'll show you why. The reason why I removed the pedestal sink is I need to find the location of the blocking I put in the wall before installing the drywall. So take a stud finder like this. And as you can see, there's blocking right here. Also, hollow, not hollow. And the same thing applies over here. So I'm right on the edge. I may actually move the pedestal sink over just a smidge so I can be on that blocking. Place a level on the pedestal sink. Make sure that it is in fact level, and it is going left to right. And, oh my gosh, amazingly front to back, it's also level. So now that I know that it is in fact level, I can mark the position on the wall for the lag bolts or lag screws. Mark the position of each hole on the under, underside of the sink. 
So this is on the left hand side and this is on the right hand side. So one extra tip here. I put together my gooseneck, P-trap, and extension tube. And I, I'm dry fitting them to make sure that when I position this pedestal sink permanently on the wall, all this plumbing will actually line up perfectly and work out. You don't have to do this, but I wanted to do it anyway to just kind of show you that this does fit. So the nice thing about this console is if you had to, if you had to adjust the height and level it out, you can adjust these trumpets right here on the bottom. So each one, so one, two, three, and four, they're all adjustable. Now we're gonna remove the sink again. Now you need to drill a hole one inch into the wood blocking you have into the wall. How do you do that with a drill? It's pretty simple really. You just put a piece of painter's tape on your bit one and a half inches back from the tip because you got half inch drywall and then that leaves you drilling one inch into your blocking. So pretty simple to do. And that's pretty much all there is to it. All you need is a drill for this. Put the sink back in place. I'm just going to attach the lag screws to the blocking using a socket wrench with, a, with an extension on it. This really helps out quite a bit, but be very, very careful because you can also get a lot of leverage and torque and you don't want to break the sink. So here's where we attach it on the left side and then the right side. So again, these are going right into the piece of wood that's behind the drywall. This retrospect sink is not going anywhere. It's super solid. It's in the wood blocking behind the drywall. That's the way to go. Now it's time to install the faucet. We're gonna be installing the American Standard Portsmouth faucet. And the reason why is because I feel like it most closely resembles the type of faucet that would have been in this home way back in 1880-1890. There's a rubber gasket on the bottom of the spout here. Make sure that's in place. And then I actually removed this part of it here. There's a, a rubber washer and this is the, the mechanism by which it's going to attach to the, the sink. So you have to remove that, remove it via the nut here. Place the connector through the center hole And position the spout over the center hole as well, making sure that that rubber washer is in place. Then you're going to place this rubber washer and this metal washer on the bottom side of the spout. So we're just going to put this rubber side here flush with the sink. Then we're going to use this nut to hold it in place. Just make sure the slotted portion of this washer faces the back of the sink. Before you tighten the brass nut that holds the spout in place, make sure that the spout is aligned with your drain, so centered on the drain. One of the best tools to use for a nut, like the one that holds the spout in place, is a basin wrench. This one's by Milwaukee, and it's pretty nice because it telescopes, so you can make it pretty long so you don't have to super reach up underneath the sink. This part of the basin wrench just grabs the nut and you can just twist it. So you would just twist it like so and you would tighten the nut with the basin wrench. Now it's time to install the valve body. Remove this adapter and then this rubber ring. Place the rubber ring into this plastic adapter. Install the valve body through the pedestal sink and then secure it to the sink using the adapter here. You can adjust the lock nut there that's right here to fit the valve body through the top of the sink. Use this wrench to tighten the lock nut on the bottom of the valve body. 
And you want to do the exact same thing for the other valve body on the right hand side. So this is your tailpiece. I'm going to remove this cap and then this styrofoam piece here. Tighten this tailpiece here onto the drain body. Tighten it really, really good. Remove this flange here by turning it counterclockwise and also remove this foam gasket. You can set them aside. This lock nut here, you're going to slide it up by turning it counterclockwise such that it's going to be flush with this rubber gasket here. This cable attachment right here, this has to face toward the rear of the sink. So you'd want to turn it this way and you're going to feed this up through the sink. You're going to tighten that lock nut by hand and then you can use a wrench to do it the rest of the way. This lock nut should be pretty darn tight. You're going to place the foam gasket around the drain body and then you're going to put the flange on top of that. You're just going to spin this clockwise. Check the drain flange here and make sure the foam gasket is not exposed. It's not and that's good. So we're going to push down completely on the pop-up stopper lever. Thread the cable connector onto the body in a clockwise fashion. Now you can pull up on the lift knob and that confirms that the pop-up stopper works correctly. Time to put all the water supply line connections together. This is the T right here. We're going to have to thread it onto the, the spout. We just threaded this on by hand and you can use a, a wrench to tighten it down. Now we're going to connect the water supply line to the valve body. So it's super, super important not to cross thread this. I'm just going to tighten it by hand now. Then you can use a crescent wrench to tighten it down. Now you can connect the water supply lines to the valve bodies. I recommend using steel braided supply lines. Personally, I just feel like they're the best. So you just want to thread these on by hand at first. Once these supply lines are hand tightened, you can turn them one quarter to one half turn more. But no more because you don't want to break that seal. So I would do the exact same thing for this side over here. Then you would want to connect the supply lines to your shutoff valve. And again, just hand tighten them and then turn them one quarter to one half turn using a crescent wrench. Admittedly, these supply lines are too long, but you can just loop them around. I had these left over from another project. Now it's time to put these adapters onto the stem. Push the adapter over the valve stem like so, and then there's a screw that you want to screw down into the valve stem. And then for the port's mouth handle, you just slide it on. This is incorrect, so you want to try to find the right position for it. This is the right position, uh, because when you turn it to the right, it's completely locked in place. So what you'd want to do is be able to turn it left and that turns it on. Okay, so that's the right position. And then all you do is you just turn the body clockwise until it tightens down to the pedestal sink. So just do the exact same thing for the other side. Now we're going to put in the rest of the plumbing for the drain. This isn't a scutcheon, it's going to fit over our plastic PVC pipe here. This needs to go on your gooseneck. So this is the gooseneck right here. This is your P-trap. So we're going to put this escutcheon on the gooseneck first. Then our piece that fits into the pipe going into the wall. So our nut. And then our plastic washer. So the plastic washer fits in like this. So we're going to be placing it on the pipe like so. First things first, you want to dry fit the gooseneck into the wall pipe and push it in as far as it'll go. 
So that's as far as it'll go. And we're just dry fitting it for now. So I'm gonna screw it in place. This is an extension tube for the drain. Obviously this is the drain. So I recommend getting the longest extension tube that you can possibly get. Oftentimes that's 12 inches. And in this case, we're just gonna slide it over the drain as far as it'll go. And you can see here, there's a little bit of a, a bump out in your P-trap. Well, you wanna slide the P-trap up against the extension tube and make a mark on the extension tube such that the extension tube goes as far down into the P-trap as possible. And we're simply gonna cut the extension tube with a hacksaw. You can also use a multi-tool for this, but hacksaw will do. It's the cheapest option. Just as a side note, take some emery cloth and clean off the sharp edge of the extension tube, both on the inside and the outside, because if you're handling this, you could easily cut yourself and you don't want that to happen. So your next step is to place your nut on top of the drain. And then the tapered edge of the, the washer should be facing down. That way it'll slide into your extension tube. So as you can see here, this will go down into the extension tube and you can slide it in like so. Uh, but you also need to place a nut like this onto the end of the extension tube and then another washer with the tapered end facing down again so it'll go into the P-trap like so. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to just slide this extension tube up as far as it'll go we're going to slide this on by hand, I mean we're going to tighten this by hand, and then we're going to undo this nut here and then slide the P-trap on as high as it'll go, such that it'll meet up with the gooseneck. So you kind of want to do these two at the exact same time. hand tighten them and then maybe another quarter turn with a, a set of channel locks and then that way what you can do is you can tighten down on this fitting that goes into the wall so you can tighten down on the gooseneck fitting just make sure it's in the entire way and then you can slide your scutcheon over that and you're finished now it's time to test for any leaks. So turn the water on at the shutoff valves. Now we're gonna turn on each individual valve separately. So we're gonna turn the hot water on first. Check for any leaks underneath this. The next step is to turn the cold water on and check for any leaks underneath this valve body. And then look to see if there are any leaks at your drain fittings. So everywhere along the P-trap and the drain and at the wall. That would be bad if there was a leak and you didn't notice it, so make sure you double check. By the way, I like running the water for at least two to three minutes. That's a really good test to see if all your fittings are working properly. I know it's wasting water, but what's worse? Wasting water right now or having a slow leak that creates a lot of damage in your bathroom? I think the latter is worse. If you really want to be anal retentive, like myself, you can check all the fittings with your hand reach up here check everywhere along the supply lines at the shutoff valves at all the fittings you can check with your hand underneath the sink at the wall just double check everything this feels remarkably very dry typically I do have at least one leak but I got lucky today adding the glass is the final step Anybody can install a pedestal sink and make it rock solid. Hopefully you got some great tips from today's tutorial. Ask me any questions you want down in the comments. I'd be more than happy to help you out. And if you want to take your bathroom remodeling to the next level, let's say you're doing a complete gut job, you're demoing the entire bathroom and you want to update it from something that's old to something that looks new and relaxing, you should definitely check out bathroomrepairtutor.com. So check out Bathroom Repair Tutor if you're updating your bathroom and you're doing a DIY project yourself. We know that you'd really love it and we could definitely help you out. But let me know what your questions are down below. Be happy to help you. Take care. We'll talk to you soon.